Okay, so let's talk quick sort performance. And this is where things get really interesting. This is one of the reasons that we talk about quick sort is because the performance of quick sort is extremely interesting. So quick sort is an algorithm that can achieve best case sorting performance in the sense that it can get to uh, OM log N. However, it can also do much worse. And how well it does depends a lot on the contents of the array. So let's talk about the, the best case first. So here's the thing. How well quicksort works depends on where the pivot ends up when I do a partition. If the pivot value ends up in the middle of the array, then I've created two problems that are roughly half the size of the original array, right? So the idea is I start off needing to sort an array of size four, and then I need to sort, you know, I start off partitioning an array of size four, uh, of eight, right? Uh, if that divides, if the, part, if the pivot divides that into two arrays of size four, then I've got two arrays of size four to partition. If the, the, if the pivot divides those into array of size two, then I've got two, four of size two, eight of size one. The, the ones of size one are already done, right? And by that point, I've sorted the entire, uh, entire array. And so in the best case, this works a lot like merge sort. So we start off, for example, let's say, so uh, partitioning is ON. Once you implement that, you'll see that. Um, so, you know, again, let's say I have an array of size eight. The first partition partitions the array into two arrays of roughly size four. I know that one size three and one size four because the pivot's in the right spot, fine. Let's just ignore that for this analysis because it doesn't really matter. Um, so the next partition, now I've got two ON partitions where N is four into four arrays of size two. And then the third partition is four arrays of size two into eight arrays of size one. Total runtime for each step is ON. And again, I've got three levels and that's because I'm breaking things down half by half by half. So eight goes into four, goes into two, goes into one. That's three, which is uh, log base two of eight. Um, okay, so N log N. N runtime for each step, log N steps. Best case. Again, this is if the partition, if the pivot value partitions the array evenly at every step. Now keep in mind, when I choose the pivot value, I have no idea whether or not that's gonna happen or not, right? If it does happen, then I get O and log N. And what's cool about quicksort is that it uses a lot less space than merge sort. So best case, quicksort, O and log N uses less space than merge sort, a lot less space. Um, okay. However, there are troubles ahead. If particularly if the pivoting does not, if the partitioning does not work evenly. So let's look at the worst case scenario. In the worst case scenario, the pivot value ends up at one end of the array. Actually, it doesn't really matter which one. Um, so let's say I pick a pivot and it turns out to be the minimum value in the array. All right. Um, so what happens? So my first partition, I started off with a value, an array of size eight. What I'm left with is the pivots in the right location, but it's at the beginning or the end. And so what's left is I have an array of size seven. Uh-oh, not looking good. Next, I try to partition this array of size seven, but the pivot again ends up at one of the boundaries. And so what I'm left with, I'm not actually even left with two arrays. The, the, the partition doesn't actually have to create two arrays. One of them might be empty if the pivot is the max or minimum value inside that part of the array. So again, step two, now I'm only down to an array of size six. Remember, when I did this the first time, I went from eight to four to two to one. Now I'm going from eight to seven to six to five to four, and this goes on and on and on. And so now you can think about it, each partition is really not making the problem very much smaller. And so it turns out that this is gonna have N levels and every partition still takes ON. And so now what I've done is ON squared. And so in the worst case performance for quicksort, and it's very easy to, to you know, um, there are certain variants of quicksort where you can trigger the worst case performance by giving it an already sorted array. Or in other cases, you can trigger the worst case performance by giving an array sorted in the opposite direction than the one that it's trying to sort. So if I'm trying to sort ascending, if, you give a, if I give you a descending array, it turns into uh, ON squared. So this is not good. Um, this is heavily dependent on the, the choice of the pivot value. 
Um, and, you know, so, so you know, the, the first thing to think obviously is, well, why don't we just choose the, the median value, right? So if you think about what value is going to divide the array into two equal pieces, that's the median, right? Uh, that's the definition of a median is that about half, is, uh, half the values are bigger, half the values are smaller. But let me ask you, how do you choose the median value from an array? The first thing you do is sort it. So the quicksort can't use the median value because it doesn't know the median value because we're trying to do the thing that's required to actually figure out what the median is. Now, one of the workarounds for this that's sort of clever is that some variants of quicksort, what they'll do is they'll take the first three values in the array and they'll, they'll pick the median of those three. So this is sort of like a sampling technique, right? To try to work around this type of pathological behavior. Um, all right, so, so let's look, you know, sort of visually at the worst case, right? So in this case, again, so now I'm sorting in ascending order, but I'm using um, an array that's sorted in, in descending order. So I pick eight, um, and now I partition around eight, and eight ends up here, right? Okay, now I pick seven, I partition around seven, seven ends up here, six, and this just goes on and on and on. And because, again, because I end up with this n levels, for an n-size array, because every time the partition's ending up not dividing the array at all, I end up with O and squared. And so, you know, quicksort is like this unpredictable relative in our, in our family of sorting algorithms. You know, merge sort is like steady as we go. Always O n log n, can't do better, can't do worse. Quicksort, sometimes you get O n log n with a lot less space, other times it's a total nightmare and you go to n squared. So there are techniques to work around this in practice, um, but this is a limitation of quicksort that's sort of widely understood and you know, limits its, its use in, in terms of working on real world data.